It is Hump Day, Menace Army, April 3rd, 4 3 24. Welcome to Menace of Sports. I am Zach Smith, your host, with my co host, Chris Drew, Akron's very own, on this fine hump day. Christopher, how the hell are you? Not the government. Not the <laughs> government name. Not the govy. It's also, um, also your email, so let's. It is. No, no. Uh, I, it's one of my emails, right? Yeah, one of, one them. of them. Um, I'm good, bro. How are you? I am absolutely gassed. If you yeah. are, if you're on Patreon and following along with with these workouts that that I've been putting out, Justine and I are doing them. It is a uh, it's a shred phase. You know, April's gonna we're trying to get trying to get that that summer pool bod right. I mean, I've Zach walked in today like he couldn't dude, walk. I, I'm like. We we went to high reps like fifth. We did we did legs today like 15, 18 reps, and it was I'm talking gas like I was ready to pass out or throw up at the end of it. But I'm back. I got a little energy. The show always brings me life. So it was honestly really really good. Yesterday was a banger. We're a day behind, so we did Tuesdays today. If you're following along, not the ab day. The ab day will be tomorrow for us. But um, it was a banger. It was a banger. Ran into Ainsley in the hot tub at Lifetime. Uh, one of my best friends, the head coach at Hilliard Davidson Wrestling, was there. So it was, it was nice. It was a little, got to hang out with some peoples. Oh, yeah. It was a function. That's good. You have a good day yesterday. Yeah. Except that bullshit fucking tornado warning. Like they, they acted like, I, they acted like it was going to be fucking tornadoes tearing through Ohio. I got a text from Josh Pate. Who, if you don't know, Josh Pate is a big uh, storm chaser, like tornado right. chaser. Right, right. And he texted me. He said, if I wasn't in Tuscaloosa, I'd be in your kitchen right now gearing up <laughs> to go chase tornadoes. This is the biggest tornado warning Ohio's had in over a decade. I'm like, oh, shit, I canceled a bunch of shit. Shit, I canceled bourbon and ball. I was like, I don't want to be doing it. And then shit goes down. go out, right. So fucking A. And then nothing happened. It just rained a little bit. Yeah, it was just a light rain, too. It wasn't even a crazy rain. No. I mean, it was crazier rain in the morning than it was later on. Yeah. At least for me, I I felt like. Oh, it definitely was. Like, at night, it's like, they're like, oh, from 4 till 11, it's high alert. Like, 5.30, I look out, it's sun shining. I'm like, what are we Mm -hmm. talking about? But I get it. After the tornado ravaged up at the lake. And, and mass casualties that they, I guess, better dramatic and safe than sorry, right? Right. So I get it. Over promise, under deliver. Absolutely. But that being said, I got a Bo Nix and a Michael Penix Jr. breakdown tonight on Bourbon and Ball. If you haven't signed up yet, it's on Patreon. It's only 20 bucks a month. We do it every Tuesday, usually. So we got that one coming. I got another Will Howard breakdown coming. And then I, you know what I decided I want to do, Chris? And you tell me if it's a good idea. Actually, chat, tell me if it's a good idea. I've already broken the game down. But I think it'd be fun to just hang out, just sip some bourbon, and watch the Sugar Bowl against Bama in 2014. That's a great idea. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've already broke it down, but might as well sip a little something and relive the glory days. Mm-hmm. It <laughs> might unlock some memories, though. It'll unlock a ton of memories, I'm sure, especially having a drink or two. And with interactivity. Like, I usually, when I broke it down, obviously, I just broke it down and put it out. This will right. be the chats going, asking questions. It's really cool. It's a fun, fun thing to do. I would encourage you just to try it for a month. I, I bet that, you you I watched that game like a hundred times. Oh, a hundred times. But I bet you if you sign up for 20 bucks, you don't cancel. I, I, I could even do this. Money back guarantee. You sign up for 20 bucks and you don't enjoy it tonight, I'll send you your 20 bucks back. How about that? Money back guarantee. There you go. It'll cost you nothing if it sucks. Yeah. I think that's a good little promotion. Just came up with it. Definitely, definitely a good promotion. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing going because we got a lot to talk about. Stefan Diggs is going to join C.J. Stroud in Houston. Yeah. Does this catapult C.J. Stroud into the top five quarterbacks in the NFL? That's the conversation we want to have because he was damn close without fucking anybody but Tank Dell, a little skinny midget. <laughs> so he's got – and Stefan – and also, Stefan Diggs for a second rounder? Is that – is he worth that? We're going to talk about that, and we have some Ohio State shit to talk about. Lukey. Let them know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get the show. Let's get to the show. Some other news, dog. Day of the spring game for Ohio State. 7-Eleven has announced Bring Your Own Cup Day, where you can fill anything you want with Slurpee for $2. That is a dangerous thing if you're the 7-Eleven on campus. Yeah, bro. Day of the spring game? You know how many people are going to pull up with, like, fucking Gatorade jugs with vodka in it and fill mm-hmm. it with... And if you, you weren't thinking about doing it, I'm giving you the idea. Go fill up. I mean, it's $2. And you can fill up those big Gatorade jugs with Slurpees. Like, now you're good. Like, whatever party you're going like to. Like, how, how are they even going to keep up? I There's no way they can keep up. I mean, the 7-Eleven and, like, and Powell, probably going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Right? You might get some high school kids with a, with a, a, a large cup. The 7-Eleven on campus? For $2? College students are going to roll up there with massive 
Gatorade jugs. Yeah, the biggest container you can get. Like the biggest container you can get and fill it up with a Slurpee. Now, it might take a while, but that's how some, do they, got some good drinks for the spring game? I'm saying. Those fraternities and shit? Oh, yeah. my God. They're going to have fucking vodka slushies yeah, I, I, and, and charge five bucks a cup and just make a killing. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's the way to do it. That's a hustle. That's the way to really hustle after it. So I, I can't wait to see kind of all the, um, you know, honestly, some of these seven, you know what they're going to do, right? At what? At eligible 7-Elevens or like, you know, some yeah. shit like yeah. that. To try they, to, they won't. The, the, all, participating 7 Eleven. Yeah, the campus one will magically not participate. And mm -hmm. I get it. I wouldn't either. <laughs> Fuck, that's, I mean, I don't even know how you would keep up. No. Like that one slushy machine is going to fill one Gatorade, uh, Gatorade <laughs> jug. And then what do you do for everybody else? Just wait in line. And wait for it to fucking turn and freeze again? Yep, just wait in line. Um, numbers came out for the LSU-Iowa game. You'd love to see it. It averaged 12.3 million viewers. That's more than every single women's college basketball game ever. More than every ESPN college basketball game ever, ever men or women. Every MLB game last year. Every NHL game. Every MLS game. And every NBA game except for one. Plus, more than every single college football <laughs> regular season game last year except for one. Being the Ohio State Michigan game, wild, wild. That's crazy. That's that's but crazy fucking numbers. We dog. knew that. We knew it. I, it is I didn't crazy know it would be that big. We did. I mean, come on. The rematch, the drama with with LSU and this coach that are they're just they're out of their fucking mind. I mean, just Caitlin Clark. It's just it, you knew it was going to be massive, mm -hmm. and it's so cool for the sport. And I even saw a former, I guess, it's a, a women's college basketball analyst say to all the girls who 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 were never on TV, and your mom had to write a letter to the paper asking them to please include the scores. Like, th this is for you. Like, the growth is incredible, and it's it's really cool to see because and, – and it's honestly, this is a testament to what matters when it comes to gender equality. Like, Megan Rapinoe's bitch-ass complaint. You, you suck. No one wants to watch you. It has nothing to do with, oh, I have a vagina. No, Caitlin Clark does too. So does Angel Reese. Guess what? They're fucking entertaining. They're they're dominant. They're really fucking good. So guess what happened? People watched. Yeah. Isn't that magical? If you're really fucking good and people enjoy it, it's entertainment, they watch. And now Caitlin Clark's going to make $5 million. This is a fucking wooden dildo up Megan Rapinoe's ass, and I love it. I still think it's wild that it did more than the Ohio State-Notre Dame game. I do too. But like that, that is big, big fucking numbers. And if, if I'm Angel Reese... I'm not worried about any of the hate. I'm going to get the biggest bag I can NIL-wise. If I'm Caitlin Clark, I'm signing every deal possible right now because the iron's never been hotter. No, I, doubt. I don't know if this, this record will ever be broken. Not by Maybe not by a women's college basketball game. I mean, I, I don't – that was – I mean, this this was – it's going to be bigger than the final – like, than the, than the championship. It'll oh, for sure. Than, than the final for four. sure. And can we, can we rewind on Angel Reese? About sexualized, she's been sexualized. I saw she posted a video of her getting a pussy wax and showing the hairs from her pussy on the wax. Like, I didn't realize she was putting it out there like that. You're you're a victim. <laughs> what? Yeah, that was wild. You're showing your pussy waxing. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? Yeah, like it like came like his back is like a like a cast almost. You know? Yeah, it was like, oh my god, look at the hair. Now it's completely bald. Like yeah. what? What are we talking about? Yeah, that. Yeah, that's wild. That was wild. Yeah, that's that's insane. I don't, I don't, I don't know how you slice it. That's that's just insane, no matter what, dog. Um, this game was the most bet on women's college basketball game across seven platforms. I mean, I'm sure it's all platforms. Yeah, well, se seven that talk about. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure Vegas, if they if they had to tell you, would tell you that the books in Vegas that was the most the most anyone's ever bet on co women's college basketball. Yeah. Women's college basketball, it's it's really on the up. We also have a video from women's college basketball that you wanted to play on the show. Yeah, let's play it. Let me tell you something. Everybody can have their opinion on Angel Reese, uh, but y'all don't know her. Like, y'all don't know Angel Reese. I know Angel Reese. I know the real Angel Reese. And the person I see every day is a strong person. Is a caring, loving person, bro. The crown she wears is heavy, bro. She's the type of teammate that's going to make you believe in yourself. The, the leap that I took from my freshman to sophomore year, Angel gave me that confidence to go be a dog, playing next to a dog every day. And, you know, just to see how the media ridicule her, went through our problems. But, like, this is my sister right here. And I'm so proud of her. Like, 
the media, y'all, how they like to twist and call it a villain and all of that, y'all don't know Angel, bro. And I'm just happy that I get to play with her. I get to be around her presence. Her energy is different. Like, she, she just make me a better player. She make me a better player, and that's what great players do. I just love that. I mean, I could do without the becoming a victim after losing, because prior to that, I thought she's a fucking dog. I mean, she talked that shit. She was a bad bitch. Like, she was, she had that energy. And she, and clearly, listening to that, when I heard it last night, I was like, wow, that is the power of leadership right there. She brings that energy, and it's that Michael Jordan effect. Everyone around her gets better because of the energy she brings. So I could have done with the victim bullshit after losing. Like, you were a bad motherfucker before you lost. Now you're a victim. Okay. I could have done without that, but I thought that was that was poignant, right? How how great of a leader that her teammates are like, nah, she's really it. Like the crown she wears is heavy, and I am the player I am because of her. Like that's powerful as shit. I agree. Um, I, I also don't love the victim stuff, but I also kind of understand it. I think I think that at, at this point, this year, dating back to last year and kind of the moment she had with Caitlin Clark, it seemed to me like she had been shouldering all of this, shouldering all the arrows. And now that it's over, kind of like it all dropped. And it's like you have mm -hmm. your moment to like cry in the background. And of course, like it's in front of the whole world because it's yeah. like an interview. But it's like for a while she was embracing being the villain when it sounds like off the court, that's not exactly who she is. Yeah. Um, and it all kind of it all kind of came down. But that was really cool to hear from from her teammate. Yeah, I, I love it. I just thought it was very, very just a great clip speaking to to what a team is. Yeah, to what a team is and what great leaders do for a team. Mm -hmm. And we can apply this all the way back to last college football season. That's what a quarterback's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That's what your quarterback is supposed to do for your team. JT Barrett, love him to death. Not the greatest passer in the world. But the reason those teams were so fucking tough and gritty and good, the reason why we never lost to Michigan was not necessarily JT Barrett's performance, but a lot of it had to do with his impact on the football team because of that shit you just heard right there. Great leaders make everyone around them better. It's just true. When people talk about the things that don't show up on the stat sheet. That's it. Clips like that mean everything. That, that, that They mean everything. And honestly, like, what a couple-year run for all of LSU athletics. Oh, my God. Like, like all the championships, the Heisman Trophy winner, like, the, all the NIL money. Like, it feels like LSU athletics across the board of any university has had the best year. Yeah. Is that, that kind of kind of fair to say? I mean, yeah, they, they've definitely Basically. been relevant. Very, very relevant. And then you add in the, the NIL superstardom of Livy Dune and Dunn and or however you say your last name. and, and Livy. It's just Livy. It's Livy. Everyone just knows live. who it is. Liv. Like, just LSU's in your face constantly, mm -hmm. aren't they? Brian Kelly, first year going to the SEC Championship. The Jaden Daniels wins the Heisman. This basketball team, Angel Reese. Yeah, didn't their Liv. baseball team win the College World Series, yeah, too? I mean, it's just it's nonstop. I'm seeing LSU. Yeah. And it's it's really, really cool for that pro that athletic department. No, really, really cool for them, and I'm and I'm honestly, I like seeing them. I like the visibility that LSU's been getting. Yeah. Um, this, <laughs> Michi Johnson, it's official. He's returning back to Ohio State. I love it, man. <laughs> Bruce Thornton's coming back. Yeah. Michi Johnson's rejoining the team. Mm -hmm. They got a coach who actually I think has a little fire. He's got a little shit to him. The team's gonna play for him. There's a lot of excitement for Buckeye hoops right now, and it's been I don't know fucking five years since that happened, at least for me. Bro, Chris Holman is the fucking worst. I mean, Chris. <laughs> Chris Holtman is the, the ba college basketball coaching equivalent of that Pac-12 commissioner. Like, <laughs> dude, what the fuck were you doing? <laughs> and this is just shout out to everybody. Oh, no, he, he, he needs another year. They're young. He's going to be shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Chris Holtman was dog water. Hot ass. Chris Holtman was the rain cloud. Yeah. That's and, what he was. And you always, when this happens, you look at it like, all right. After he got fired, it's like, all right, let's see if he's the problem, right? Definitely was the problem. Usually he doesn't get answered this fucking quick. No, no, confirmed. He was the problem. Like, usually usually he does not get answered that quick. He got answered quick as shit. Um, Mari Abor, who was a, a defensive lineman backup for Ohio State, transferred in January, seeing the Michi Johnson news, uh, had a little son on his Instagram. I know you could, have, could leave a school and then go back and talking about Michi with this little emoji. Ooh. You think he wants to come back, seeing what Ohio State did this offseason? I mean, because it's really going crazy, bro. And he's I mean, there. maybe. I don't know. Was he any good? Does Ohio State want him back? That's um, the real question. Nah, bro. He 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 was. I mean, he he had the injury issue, but he left Ohio State, and it's just he was the one who started beefing with fans. 
he said that I hate you up north niggas or something like that to a oh, fan. No. And then it's, it kind of got bad. But he's back down there at, a, at Texas at SMU. And honestly, like Ohio State could use some defensive end depth, maybe not for this year, but for next year. But it was, it was funny to see because it's like Michi's back. I mean, obviously, Bryson Rogers hit the portal and then ended up coming back to Ohio State. And you look around, anybody that left is like, damn. They're about to win a natty. Right. <laughs> uh, so y'all got to. Hey, that's got to be that pain. Mm -hmm. If you left in this offseason cycle and then Ohio State hoists the trophy, you're going to be sitting at home on a couch somewhere like, damn, I really fucked that up. Yeah. I really fucked up. Well, and the timing of when a lot of guys left, Zach, there was not a great feeling around the program. Mm -mm. It was like it was the dark cloud around the program. And then all of a sudden they started hitting double, double, triple, home yeah. run. It, yeah. I mean, it, it was that. You look back, right? That after Michigan lo loss. After losing to Michigan, <clears throat> the future looked bleak, right? Because whether whether Comicore transferred or not, you like, didn't feel great about the quarterback position next year. You didn't feel great about anything, really. You felt like the trajectory of the program was plummeting like a fucking plane that lost power. And you're sitting there like, oh, God, this doesn't look good. Ryan Day's probably cooked. And out of that dark cloud, fucking slaying dragons, man. They came out swinging. And... You know, we'll see the result. It's not like a sure thing that, oh, they fixed it. But it sure feels like they they might have. They're trending in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, like on paper, you got to feel good. Like on paper, you added a top three running back in the country. Like like on paper, you went and added the transportal quarterback, no matter how you feel about it. On paper, you added fucking Caleb Downs. Yeah, it's just nuts. Like you added so much. And so, it, it, you know, those guys that left are going to miss kind of a special run. And honestly, because of that, I think they're going to see less – transfer portal movement this year than they would in most other years if that yeah. makes sense and because in the spring people have talked about kind of the the doors being blown on some of these programs with guys like fleeing and leaving but ohio state knows they have to have a deep team and at least there's some level of buy-in when you get guys like bryson rogers who leave the portal and come back to be wide receiver five yeah and i mean you know what it is right if you're a young player right now in columbus ohio you have to feel pretty good just outside looking in right or inside looking in that there's a good chance Ohio State wins it all. And I know it's I know it's really hard to do. Like, I've, I've done it three times. It's really hard to do, no matter how, yeah. how good you are. It's not like, oh, we're the best team in the country. We're definitely definitely winning it. Like, you got, you really, it's hard as shit to do. But, like, if you transfer now as a sophomore, can't you just wait? <laughs> just wait until after this season and see what happens. Because you might get a ring at least, mm -hmm. and then transfer if you're still not looking bright, like a bright future in Columbus. That's I, that's, I don't think kids are going to leave just because they're like, damn, I don't want to miss out on a, on a natty, and it, there's a great chance we win it. And because after this year, I think the program could see a step backwards, right? Just because they're so like like you know veteran, and a lot of times when you have a year where a bunch of guys come back for an extra year, yeah. the next year kind of doubles up on the hit. Well, then it just right? comes, it, yeah, it absolutely does. It, and we're we're looking at it with Michigan, and who knows? It, it doesn't mean you're going to take a step backwards but it creates a world of unknown right you just don't know because those way more uncertainty yeah, the guys that are going to take over you haven't really seen much of and they could be great players too and you might not have a, a, a step down but the unknown makes you nervous yeah definitely makes you i mean if you just look at this defense alone you're gonna you're gonna lose burke maybe igbenosin lathan jordan hancock both defensive ends both defensive tackles cody simon and maybe sunny styles dog who was, basically everyone but Caleb Downs. Exactly. So you're losing like, all the starting eleven potentially, except Caleb Downs. So you got to. Like, yeah, but I mean, you know, you feel like you feel good about guys like Jermaine Math. Yeah, you do. And, you and feel good. Like Hartford, and then, I mean, there's some pieces where you're like, with some development, that we might not miss a beat at that position. But losing, you know, a that's lot just of a fuck ton to replace. Yeah, a lot, that's a lot to replace because it's a two year. Like you're replacing players for. From, usually you'd only replace one group of players a year, mm -hmm. but it's two groups of players because everybody came back to win the Natty. Yeah. Um, and that that definitely definitely makes something. Oh, Bronny, also in the portal. Hey, I, bring him to Columbus. What That's are we what doing? That's I'm saying, bro. Everyone's hating, like, talking about don't – like, bring him to – like, who cares? Why? Bring him. I mean, he might not be his daddy, but, like, he's still decent. Yeah. What is he, the fifth best guy on the roster at Ohio State if he comes? Like, I mean, I I, I don't know. I'd have to dig like, more into I'm it. But, saying, but like three, three and D, like – and fucking LeBron, it's LeBron. <laughs> I mean, you do it for that reason alone. And, and because, I mean, if the kids suck, you don't do it. I don't, it's, it's like Snoop's kid wasn't very good. It's, that's, we didn't recruit him, but it would have been cool to have Snoop Dogg around the program. That would have been great for recruiting. Like, you do it because the kid's not bad, and his dad is LeBron. Mm -hmm. And his dad has an affinity for Ohio and Ohio State. Like, I, we got, I got to see it. Get it done. Yeah, get it done. It might help out your NIL uh, stuff, too, yeah, right? You know, <laughs> might, might get a little 
deal with Nike, deal with Beats. Like, I'm just saying, bro, like LeBron joined like the foundation board, which whatever happened to that first group, nobody will knows. And then we still missed out on Brian to USC. Um, but Zach, do you want to get a quick word from our partner and talk about some, uh, some CJ Strong? All right, we'll be right back after this. Menace Army, I've told you a hundred times already. The best sheets I've ever owned, ever used. They're sexy, they're comfortable, and the best part is they're temperature controlling, self-cooling. These are miracle-made sheets. Did you know that the temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep, sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets inspired by NASA. Miracle Made uses silver-infused fabrics and makes temperature-regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. They're self-cleaning. Comfort and quality are through the roof. They're designed for your skin. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. All you have to do is go to trymiracle.com slash menace, trymiracle.com slash menace, to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whatever you're buying from them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code menace at checkout, you'll get three free towels and an extra 20%. Off. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash menace and use code menace to came to claim your free three towel piece set and save over 40% off. Trymiracle.com slash menace. Treat yourself, menace army. I'm just telling you, the towels are great, the sheets are great. I highly, highly encourage it. We love media. Oh, yeah. I got I saw a great clip last night and it and cap it, 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 it captured every feeling I have about the media. And I just wanted to play it for you because this applies to sports media, specifically the Buckeye beat, as well as any clip I've ever heard. And I love it because it's Denzel, the GOAT. Let's listen to Denzel's thoughts on the media. There's been a lot of buzz about this fake news. Anything you practice, you'll get good at, Inclu including BS. You Hold told on. me last <laughs> Okay. But you heard me? Does that make sense? I heard you loud and clear. And if that's not a reminder, careful what you listen to, what you watch, and what you believe. Because you get told something enough by enough people, and that shit becomes reality for you. Trust me. I lived it. I just thought it was, I wanted to put it on the show. No other reason than that. And it all, it kind of, felt, you know, kind of fits right now. Yeah. Because I... Found out who the running back coach was going to be. Tweeted it out Saturday. On Monday, everybody announced who the running back coach was going to be. Nobody wanted to give us credit except for Jeremy Birmingham. Shout out to Berm. I've said forever, there's really only a couple guys I like on the beat. And Berm's one of them. And he, he might have been doing it kind of in jest, but he gave credit. And again, I don't care about credit. I, had, I, I said I had 247 reach out to me like, oh, we didn't realize. We apologize. I was like, dude, I don't really care about credit. He definitely, like, he was definitely lying to you, but it's cool. I mean, yeah. But, I mean, it's it's true. Like, I don't care who, about breaking news. I, it's the last thing I want to do on this platform. I just ran with it because I was told to. Mm -hmm. And it also is funny because, like, like all these journalists like like to stick to the journalistic stuff, except for when it comes to you. Yeah. Like, when it comes to you, nah, we ain't got to give credit. No, like, fuck nah, that guy. He yeah. beat his wife. Don't give him yeah, credit. Yeah, but just look at it. Just look at look at what's going on in the beat. We told you NIL was a train wreck. They came out and did an interview with Gene Smith about how the NIL's in a good place. Mm -hmm. NIL sucked until we lost to Michigan a third time and then lost to Missouri. If that's not obvious, look at this last transfer portal cycle. We didn't have to do this shit ever in recruiting. We were losing recruits to Miami, running backs to Miami. Like, what the fuck? Because they got paid more. NIL was awful. We told you it was awful. The beat told you it was great. I mean, it's just just careful what you listen to in all walks of life. It was funny. I think it was what Juck on Bucks. Yeah, it was Juck on Bucks that posted Austin Ward's face. Oh my god, <laughs> they're giving you credit. Dog. So funny. I couldn't help but laugh, dog. That's uh... it's, it's funny because I never disliked Austin Ward until he disrespected Chris. Yeah, I you know I, I knew he was the mouthpiece for Ohio State football, but good for him. He mm -hmm. built those bridges, and that's that's valuable when you're a beat writer. But yeah. then when he disrespected Chris, I was like, nah, fuck this fat ginger. You, you're not going to disrespect my guy like that. And just so everyone knows why I don't like Austin Ward. I, I never disliked him before that. But when he disrespected Chris, it's fuck Austin Ward forever on this platform. Yeah, that shit was crazy, bro, because I didn't know that, like, there was actually real vitriol amongst um I didn't really media. either. Yeah, I didn't realize there was real vitriol amongst Columbus media, and I had just been here for a couple months. And the only reason why is because it was because we did the NIL show. He tried to fight back for Ohio State. They told him, hey, we got to get this narrative flipped, and he did it. 
basically tried to call us liars. And I was like, and I on the show I said, I said, no. Hey, that motherfucker's a mouthpiece. That's what he is. He's he doesn't know he doesn't know what well, he's talking about. Because he was there with Jerry Emick. On the right, day that's the that, best part. And at the place on the day that Brian got promoted, bro, it just like everything just kind of lined up. It did. But anyways, we don't to talk about Austin Ward. But that's that's where that started. He disrespected yeah. Chris, and I I don't have time for that. Yeah, it was uh it was wild times. But uh, speaking of disrespectful guys, uh, Mr. <laughs> Stefan Diggs said, "I'm up out of there." Uh, first of all, CTESPN had it first. Wild on, yeah, on March 17th, <laughs> said Diggs to the Texans. It's like yeah. we it's like we are the Antonio Brown of Ohio State football. Yeah, bro, I was. <laughs> and I don't really like that comparison, bro. AB is on a Wilt Chamberlain run right now like he's putting up crazy boat like, numbers dude is wild and i know he like me and you talk for the show and it's like he definitely just got this from yeah he does, he, see he does what i do which is he doesn't even try <laughs> like he'll just talk to someone he knows really well like stefan diggs and diggs will be like yeah bro i'm, I'm my agent said I, I think i'm gonna go to i'm gonna be going to houston yeah and then he tweeted out a picture of diggs in a houston uniform on march 17th <laughs> what was that two weeks ago yeah bro wild times <laughs> and then stefan diggs for the past 24 hours has been kind of popping off and sneak dissing like josh allen someone put like josh allen would be an all pro with or without stefan diggs stefan diggs last night you sure about that but he's replying <laughs> yeah just replying to everything it's it's been <laughs> hilarious but look bro they got him what what they traded a 2025 second round pick that they got from the vikings for him yeah I mean, just Yo. listen, this Texans offense, th here's what happened. The Texans drafted C.J. Stroud second overall. And with the year he had, they went, oh, shit. We have a franchise quarterback. We got to build fast. Yeah. Because Chris always talks about it. You need it on the quarterback's rookie deal. Have to. Have to. Unless, unless he's Mahomes and can do it with anybody, you got to get it done on the rookie deal. And so they added Joe Mixon. I mean, they're receiving core now. Stephon Diggs, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Dalton Schultz, the tight end. Like, it's it's looking it's looking up in Houston. But they got Lormy Tunsil on the left side. Like they yeah. got they got guys there. And I, I'll say it now. I'll say it a million times. When you have a quarterback on the rookie deal, that first year is to see if you have something, and then you bust the window wide open. <clears throat> you have to. And you do it even if the quarterback only shows a little bit because of the amount of money you can spend in other places to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, people forget. Jared Goff didn't have near the rookie year that C.J. Stroud had. He was decent, had his moments. The Rams saw enough and said, "Gotta go. Let's go. Gotta we go. gotta go now." And with him on the rookie deal, and he's the number one overall pick, so getting paid more uh, um, in terms of salary cap percentage wise, made it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, shit. Jimmy Garoppolo was was on a rookie deal, got him to a Super Bowl. Like Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy, Super Bowl. Russell Wilson, his only Super Bowl win, rookie deal because they could spend everywhere. If you got it go it's a thing mm -hmm. you get it you got a quarterback on the cheap you can spend everywhere and load up your roster and that's what houston's trying to do right now and boy it feels it feels real good now there is some concern about stefan diggs the superstar personality the egomaniac he's being called the diva ruining a young quarterback because we've seen that at a lot of places kind of the, the hindrance do you think stefan <laughs> diggs is too much of a personality to hinder a guy like C.J. Stroud, or will C.J. make it work? I think C.J. will make it work. Okay. And I think that, honestly, with that receiving core, and I think Nico Collins has been a surprise, but he's not a wide receiver one. He's got a true wide receiver one now. Mm -hmm. He's going to feed that son of a bitch. And honestly, like, the like what's, Steph, what's, that, what's Stephon going to be mad about? He's going to get fed. Fed well. And it's what this will be the most accurate quarterback Stefan's played with, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Josh Allen, for how good he is, big arm, but had his moments where you're like, where the fuck is that ball going to land? Because yeah. we never knew. Um, obviously, Kirk Cousins and Case Keenum before that. Um, you know, Kirk Cousins is, is, a, is a good throw of the football, but he'll miss a lot of wide open guys a lot. And that's Justin Jefferson's current frustration. Yeah. I mean, right now we're talking about a ball placement specialist. I mean, fuck. You might, I mean, that was Diggs definitely not in his, or kind of in the back part of his prime. He might go out there and look like prime AB before the CTE. Bro, like, I'm, I'm drafting what? him in fantasy. That's what I'm saying. Without a doubt. Their Super Bowl odds after this trade happened went from 22 to 1 to 18 to 1. Their odds to win the AFC went from 11 to 1 to 9 to 1. Um, plus 150 to plus 130 to win the division, and the win total is now at 9.5. That's impact, man. It is, and I'm betting the over on the win total. That's impact. The last two off seasons since trading Deshaun Watson, 
just level up. D'Amico Ryans, Will Anderson, Delaney Hunter, Stefan Diggs, Joe Mixon, Nico Collins, Tank Dell. And drafted C.J. Stroud. And C.J. Stroud. And I will point back forever to the decision that Lovey Smith made to go for two in that final game and convert it mm -hmm. to lose the number one overall pick. Probably the greatest thing that Houston fans were livid about that could ever happen to them. Yeah. Build a statue. Build a statue. Lovey Smith in Houston. The other part of it, is Stefan Diggs worth a second? That's what I don't know. Like, like, if Justin Fields is worth a sixth, is Stefan Diggs really worth a second? In a league where a quarterback matters, there's a bunch of bad quarterbacks out there that are playing. I mean, or at least not NFL starting worthy quarterbacks. Justin Fields is only worth a sixth? Yeah. And the Texans are getting a fifth and a sixth round pick as well in this deal. Yeah, it's wild. I I don't know what Stefan Diggs is worth. I, I think the second is interesting. I think I it's not a bad trade for the Houston Texans to, to give up a second. I'm more surprised that another team didn't offer a second and a fourth, right? Yeah. yeah. Like the Browns could have used one. Yeah. Like the, the Bengals have a second round pick. Like, why not for a guy that's maybe surefire? Like, there's a lot of a lot of picks out there yeah. you would think that they they could get that done. <laughs> Is C.J. Stroud, in your eyes, a top-five quarterback in the NFL? I mean, so you have to talk about that conversation, right? Who are the top-five quarterbacks in the NFL? In no order, right? Mahomes, Lamar, and then where do you go from there? I mean, you go Joseph. Joe Burrow, healthy, for yeah. sure. And if we're talking about guys that are definitely better than C.J. Stroud after one year, those three, who else? Honestly, yeah. I don't know, like Josh Allen. I yeah, I see the chat debating it. I would rather have CJ Stroud than Josh Allen. Same, me too. Um, like Matt Stafford. I mean, Matt Stafford probably, but also we, we're acknowledging that Matt Stafford is like his prime is over. He's on the decline. CJ Stroud is just getting started. Yeah, he's, so like he just started the race. He's like, about to hit his stride today. Matt Stafford's probably better, but that could change in three months. Right. Four but then months. is there a fifth? Who else is better after one year watching? And even without projecting growth in that second year, who who was better last season than C.J. Stroud? J J Jared, Jared Goff, maybe. Jared, Jared Goff had had a really good year. I I, I know that that it's <laughs> it's fun to look at him and be like, oh, I'm about to throw up. But <laughs> but Goff was getting off right, and so now you gave C.J. Stroud a, a wide receiver one. Yeah. So does that elevate him? Above golf, maybe above Matt Stafford. I mean, I think that that's a fair assumption. Yeah. I mean, like Aaron Rodgers is tricky because he's hurt. Yeah, if Aaron Rodgers comes back healthy and can and can be Aaron Rodgers, he's probably at minimally fourth in the league. Uh, Herbert. Herbert, maybe, maybe Herbert. No, because Herbert's not better than Allen. Like, and and to me, here, here, here's there's two parts to this. The young quarterbacks in the league, anybody under 25, I'm taking CJ Stroud over all of them. Oh, uh, yeah. Like that, that one's easy. And then the other half of it is like, like for the next five, if I if I was giving any quarterback a five or three year contract in the league, I think I would take Pat, Joe, Lamar, then CJ. CJ. That's wild for a guy in his second year. And I think that he's going to end the helmet scouting at Ohio State. <laughs> yeah. I for think, sure. I think now it's over. I mean, he's got, yeah, as long as he has a couple more years that are that are really good, like this past year. We're done saying Ohio State quarterbacks can't make it in the NFL. It was a stupid argument to begin with. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could, you could say that about Michigan quarterbacks too, other than Tom Brady. But that's one guy. They all, the rest of them were complete busts. Crazy. CJ Stroud already the best quarterback in Houston Texans history. Right. The second best ones on the Browns. And we don't know what we'll see, what we'll get. And, you know, we just see him under Yelp reviews for massage parlors. So <laughs> really, really, really don't know. Really don't know what the fuck's going on. So I'm I'm excited for CJ, and it's funny. One of the people in our Minnesota Generals chat already had a bet for him to win Offensive Player of the Year, mm. and that's a lot of juice on that. And he's probably going to. I mean, he's. I would not be surprised if he threw for five thousand yards next year. It'd be wild. It's going to be fun to watch, regardless. No matter what, no matter where he ranks, it's all you know. It's all debatable conversation. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun to watch, no matter what. It's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> and then when he wins the Super Bowl, I'm going to sit here and think. 
yeah, Connor Steins was cheating his ass off because no way that guy couldn't beat Michigan. Right. Like, there's no fucking way, right? Yeah, we got to hold it against him a little bit now. He <laughs> yeah, plays, we do. He plays the position differently now that he's in the NFL than he, he did at Ohio State. He definitely Outside changed. of the Georgia game, we didn't see him play like that. But we saw it in the Georgia game, and then we watched it all year for the Texans. I wonder what happened. I don't know. Like like a, a flip switch is that Ryan Day's fault? Is Ryan Day not unlocking the monster? I mean, in these we'll guys? never know. And I and I may may troll around and try to find out, but I can't imagine a coach telling a quarterback, "Don't ever run." Like I just can't fathom it. Like that opens up your offense incredibly. I just can't fathom it. And here's here's the other part that I've a theory I've toyed with for a while. Guys, head coaches that aren't quarterback guys. I think encourage quarterbacks to do all the freaky wild shit when coaches that are head coaches that are quarterback guys, they just don't want guys to make mistakes. So you get kind of a different type of look. D'Amico Ryans. It's like CJ Stroud, like you, you got it, bro. Go out there and ball. Like Kirby Smart. All of Kirby Smart's quarterbacks always get real freaky. Yeah. Extra freaky. But, now, what, but why is that? Even even look at Bama. Bryce Young did it. Jalen Milrow did it. Like Tua did it. Like mm-hmm. defensive coaches are like, that's fucking terrifying. I hate it when they do that. So you should do that. <laughs> Even Urban Meyer, receiver coach, what did he do with the quarterbacks? Pound your face into this concrete wall on third and one every time. Yeah. Like, it's just like quarterback coaches are like, oh, I hate that. What if he gets hurt? Yeah, offensive coaches, it feels like, at least in college football, coach with a little bit more anxiety. I mean, there are some exceptions. Like Lincoln Riley coaches like he's never had an anxious nerve ever. <laughs> just like fucking Link, go. L- Lincoln Riley's out there like he's on, he's high as a kite or something. He's like fucking yeah. just dialing the shit up like. Hey, bro, let's do this shit. Lincoln Riley calls plays like he's on shrooms. He does. He's a, he's on mushrooms. And it's yeah. like two words. He'll be like, hey, we're going to do uh, bottle up. Yeah. And everybody knows what that play is. And you're like, what the fuck is bottle up? Bro, when they ran the fake QB power into a fade route against fucking Colorado, I was like, what the? Or Washington, I was like, what the fuck is that? Bro, he just, he's creative as shit. I love his creativity. He is. It doesn't. It doesn't. He 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 calls offense like Brett Venables calls defense. Yeah, for real. It's like this isn't sound, but fuck it, it, it might work. But I have noticed that a lot of the defensive coaches like encourage their quarterbacks to go absolute willy nilly, and I think it's because it's harder to defend for them. Yeah, it is. It's because ball. they hate it. Mm-hmm. They they love playing defense with a guy who doesn't run because they can play coverage, they can be gap sound, and everything's accounted for. Yeah. And if they execute their job, they should stop the offense, right? Obviously, you have one-on-one battles where if they lose it, they'll, then they could get hit with a play. But when the quarterback starts running around, pets' heads fall off. It's like fucking chaos, and nobody knows what to do. It kind of reminds me of Ryan Day on the other side of it. Like, remember Ryan Day had that window where only – the only defense he wanted to run was that cover three look. Yeah. And it's because he struggled against cover three. It's like, that's so difficult. I don't care. That's what they have to run. Yeah. Be that's really, really run. sound and execute at a high level. Yeah. So fun stuff. I'm excited <laughs> for CJ Stroud though. Um, but it is, it is wild. I do want to, I do want you to kind of ask Brown. I mean, I shit, you know who to ask the fuck. Yeah, I, I can shit. They all got, they all left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bella, sorry. Thanks for the 10. What in particular goes into determining whether a player it plays left or right for guard, tackle, defensive tackle, DN, other than the team's needs? Like, do different skill sets play better left to right, or are they used differently? It's a good I mean, question. sometimes guys are just more comfortable in a right-handed or left-handed stance, but a lot of it just has to do with, like, repetition. Mm. Like, a kid starts, you know, you may, you may have a great right guard, and it's, you know, age matters. Like, you have Donovan Jackson coming back. Like, shit, we need a right guard. So Luke Montgomery slides in at right guard. He plays a whole year in a right-handed stance, and it's like, oh, shit. It's so uncomfortable to stand the other way, right? It's just it's, yeah. he's so used to doing it that way. And that's why a lot of times it's hard for guys to flip sides. You, you'd you rather a guy bump to tackle and put a new right guard in than, than flip. You know, just it's it's tough to do. Definitely. Just I, for just comfortability. Rep-wise. Makes sense. Brian, thank you for the five Damn. gifted memberships. What a guy. We appreciate you, Brian. If you don't know about the memberships, it's a way to become an official member of the Army. All you got to do is $4.99 a month on our YouTube homepage. Go join, and you get a custom Avi. You get custom emojis, and you're going to get a bunch of other shit as we build it out. But for now, it's only 5 bucks. Support the cause. Support the movement. We appreciate you. Way to support. Uh, Gorky, thanks for the two. No one ever should be a Colts fan. Thank God I thank God I bet. See, as a Browns fan, I mean, I, I've, I started gambling – um, obviously once I got done coaching a little bit here and there, but fantasy football saved my life because if I just had to watch the Browns, just root for the Browns and didn't care about anybody else, boy, it would be a miserable life. 
No, definitely, definitely a tough go. Definitely a tough go. Zach, do you want to get a quick word from our partner that come back? Talk some college football. Sounds good. We'll be right back after this. Menace Army, I got a life hack alert. They came to us a couple months ago and I started using them. I got a family of six. Chaos like crazy. If you want stress-free meals this spring, check out Factor. They're delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every, every, uh, every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. And they're freaking delicious, man. They are so good. There's over 35 options, calorie smart, keto. You name the diet, you can find a meal that fits. Chef-prepared meals on your table in two minutes with Factor's ready-to-eat meals. Gourmet meals, they have premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broc- broccolini. And asparagus. I didn't even know what broccolini was before I before I got my first one. No fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the, the, the savor the good stuff. Tailor to your schedule. Customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much as you or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. All you have to do is head over to factormeals.com slash menace50 and use code menace50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code MENACE50 at factormeals.com. Go check it out. It's my go-to after every show, especially after working out before the show. Like, I'm depleted right now. I got I got my Quest bar that I get in before the show, and then after the show, I need some food. So I, I heat up a factor meal every day. Um, we're at my, you know, silly season. It's like the extra little bit. I, I love it. Um, there's now a... a- a post going viral of Michael Penix mirrors and all the play designs written on them that I guess he would look at and study every day. This is part of the, uh, let me keep the character up from the people. Zach, what want your thoughts on the, on the, on the plays on the mirror. First of all, I mean, I think it's cool. It mm-hmm. shows the kid is like, that's like a motivating thing. Like just let me draw them on my mirror, look at them every day, but there weren't play designs. <laughs> they were formations. <laughs> oh, buddy. If you don't have those down after the first month at Washington, what the fuck is we doing? <laughs> like, it should take you no more than four weeks to learn all the formations as a quarterback. It should be really easy. It's the first thing you do. Why do we have a picture of a two-year starting quarterback at Washington with formations on his mirror? <laughs> like, don't you already know that? So if it was, you know, they say, if, if, it, if he moved in silence and did this stuff, I'm all about it. Like, why is this getting out there? Like, his agent's putting it out there. He said, hey, hey, dude. Draw up some shit on your mirror, and we're going to get it out there to make it like you're a football junkie. And he's like, okay. And he drew formations. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Formations? I, it just, like, bro, you've been in college for 30 years. Right. You're fucking 40 years old. You don't know the formations yet? Yeah, dog. This, this is entirely his agent trying to spin this football junkie, obsessed with success, obsessed with football. They're just trying to build it up. You see this shit. It's NFL draft silly season. And the timing of it. It's like, have the big pro day. Then the next week, we're going to try to keep your your name in the news every yeah. single day. P- plus, like, why on your mirror? If you look at the picture, how the fuck do you shave? Like, you, you keep the mirror so you can see yourself when you're like, nah, dude, don't need to getting look ready. Don't groom yourself. Just ball. Just ball. Just I don't ball. need to see myself. I need to know what flex right is. <laughs> the fuck? Um, other Washington player, Roma Dunza will have a visit with the Jets. The Jets are heavily invested in getting another receiver, which I found interesting because it's like more of an arms race a little bit for Aaron Rodgers. I thought they would kind of go all in to maybe add to the offensive line. Maybe they know something we don't, but Rome and Garrett Wilson could be pretty nifty. Hey, just uh, they got they got the opposite of what Houston has. They have a top five quarterback that's on his last leg, literally, yeah. and they load him up with with weapons and try to cash in on this short window Aaron Rodgers era in in what New Jersey where the hell's New, the Jets New Jersey yeah, probably yeah, New Jersey Jets probably the the Jersey Jets speaking of the Jets last thing just this no two more things the Vikings are fully prepared and will potentially start Sam Darnold even though Justin Jefferson said please come to me with a quarterback plan so I know what my future's got in me He's got to go. He's got to. He's got to get out of Minnesota. Like what? So they're going to roll with Sam Sam Darnold this year, and then draft a quarterback in twenty twenty five. So they're already going to tank the season. Like he needs to sit out. Yeah. He needs to demand a trade. Like then what? Then you're going to have a rookie quarterback that next year. If the guy is C.J. Stroud, okay, it might work out. If he's Bryce Young, uh, Bryce Young, you're fucked. Like, buddy, I am getting out of Minnesota so fast. 
This is why I never hold it against a wide receiver if he doesn't have rings. Never, ever, ever. Like no. in the all-time discussion, I never hold it against him because this is a case of an all – I mean, I, I think we're at the point, right? An all-time great talent at wide receiver. Oh, yeah. An all-time great talent is never going to have a Super Bowl because of the Vikings organization. It's happened to a lot of them. Yeah. It's, it's happened to a lot it, of and them. And it sucks every fucking how, time. How many rings Megatron got? Not a. I don't even know if he has a win. Uh, I don't know if he won a game his whole NFL career. Breaks my fucking heart. Right. Barry Sanders. What, he's not one of the best ever? That's Fuck out of here. That's what I'm saying. It's so, it's so team-oriented. Um, Chase Claypool is on the exclusive negotiations list for the CFL Rough Riders. Oh, I thought it was the Raiders. Not the Raiders? No. Oh, he's going to Canada. The Rough Riders. Imagine oh. that. So fade them if you're betting. I know DJ and Keel are degenerate gamblers. Oh, they definitely bet on the CF CFL. Yeah, fade the uh, fade the good old rough rider. Yeah, fuck around and find out, Chase. Yeah, we're, at, we're actually we're approaching the three year anniversary of him saying he's a top five receiver of the NFL. <laughs> and since then, he has been traded and de dealt and and infected twenty five teams with cancer. <laughs> like poor, that fucking guy. Put him in Canada. Get him out of this country. <laughs> He was traded for a second rounder, same as Stefan Diggs. Think about that. Fucking insane. I cannot make it make sense. Um, what's up, Super Chat, Zach? And then got, got a college football list for you that I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. uh, Duke, thank you for the two. Austin Ward spends his weekends with Diddy. Okay. Electively. Yeah. Um, Keel, thanks for the two, brother. My favorite game from 2014 is Michigan State in Lance. That's my favorite game I've ever coached in, actually, believe it or not. Um, because we lost to them in 13 in the Big Ten Championship, and a lot of the onus was on our throw game. We couldn't we couldn't attack their coverage. I mean, they played man coverage with two, with first-rounders, and it was a bitch. And we didn't have a ball placement specialist at quarterback, so you had to get wide open, and, and we did a shitty job. And so 2014, it was like, now nah, fuck that. We're going to run this bitch back. And we went nuclear. So it was one of my – it's probably my favorite game I've ever coached in, and that's another one that we'll add to the queue. Later in the offseason, maybe that's a good May, June breakdown after the draft when it's kind of like, all right, we'll preview next season at some point, probably like starting June, July, and August. Definitely July and August. But there's kind of that lull where we're still going to do a bourbon and ball. We're still going to hang out, talk football. Part of it's going to be a football kind of education course where we're going to talk about coverages, fronts. Like, what does it mean? Why do they play them? Just to educate people on football. And the other ones are going to be nostalgic, right? Like, let's watch the 2014 Michigan yeah. State game because that was really fucking fun. And let's drink to that. Let's cheers to that. Third and 20, fade to Devin Smith. I told some crazy it's the best ball JT Barrett ever threw. Ever threw. I told some lies about, about Devin after that. Like, I mean, it was one of it was an incredible throw and a ridiculous catch. Yeah, he was a nut. He was so dialed in, bro, because everyone before that game thought he was only a deep threat. He did everything. everything. Ran the whole route tree. And I thought, I thought he was the chosen one. I Dude, Devin I, could do everything except block really well, but he still blocked a little bit. Yeah, he didn't have to block. He had Evan Spencer there. <laughs> Sub him in. I ain't come here to block, coach. Put Evan in. <laughs> yeah, call a fade. Call a go. <laughs> Pat, thank you for – oh, here we go. Gorky, thanks for the two. Told you it was nuts, Zach. Sign up for Patreon 30. 30 bucks if you want to be on the general tier. And his website's almost done. I got to email him today because they're ready to, to do kind of a full reveal to me and get my feedback so once we get that done probably have a couple adjustments this website's going live and we're about to i mean elevate like crazy hmm. chris doesn't even want to comment on it <laughs> pat thanks for the five curious what's the backstory of the beef with austin ward no, he uh, nothing I, I just gave it yeah just just a little there was there was a little moment in public that didn't have to happen because yeah, I mean, it, I'm not hostile. I'm a good dude. Like, he, I, the reason why he disrespected Chris is because I called him out for being a mouthpiece of the program because he tried to refute what I knew to be true from everyone involved in the NIL, that it was a shit show. It was a bad deal. Yeah. And he tried to like fight back for Ohio state and in, in turn, try to discredit me, even though I was right. And then I don't know how that got projected onto Chris, but Chris went up to meet him when, when he, he was at Yogi's, we were there and Chris walked over. Like, I want to meet him. Like, I don't, I, didn't, I don't even know that Chris cared or knew that that Austin and I had a little thing going well, on. No, I, I knew there was like a little bit, but he waved at you. Yeah. He said, what's up when you were walking by? So I'm like, all right, bet. And so Chris just never met him. And Chris, before joining this platform, was a Buckeye fan. And so he went over to introduce himself. And dude disrespected the fuck out of him. And that's the minute he became a villain.
But like every a lot of other people on the beat have been real cool to me. Like Dave Biddle, like yeah, I love got, Dave wing, Biddle. got wings with Dave. That was really cool. Got to go again. I don't know. It was just and and I had just gotten to Columbus at this point too. Mm-hmm. So it was definitely it was definitely something. Um, Luke, thanks for the five. Nah, if you're gonna present yourself <laughs> as a villain, then be the villain. Don't cry when people see you as the villain after a loss. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. I mean, I, I agree with it, but I also like know, at least in joining this platform, it like it like takes a lot to wear the villain coat all the time. You don't feel like the bad guy. And so when there are moments of like gaps, I think it's natural. I just it, it's kind of a fuck around and find out though. It, it like she it is. she brought it this is. persona to the court to interviews. She she was the one that brought it and then didn't like the response. And it's like, eh, you kind of fucked around and found out, huh? Yeah. And I, I'm not saying the response was appropriate, but it's fucking America. People talk shit on social media like crazy. No, they do. I guess I guess a part of me like understands where she's at because like when I joined this platform, dog, like all of a sudden I had to shoulder being some sort of villain. Yeah. And you, I mean, you know, but that me. was uh, that's different. That's unwarranted, right? Like you didn't do anything. You just sit next to me and do a show, right? Well, I know that you also wear the the coat of being a villain. I know how difficult that. I mean, well, at least I, for me, I also uh, married the wrong person. So I kind of shoulder that blame too. And here we go. Next super chat. <laughs> You're right, though. Justin, thanks for the 10. 14 Sugar Bowl was one of my most favorite memories. I actually moved from Columbus to Mo- Mobile, Alabama the summer before the 14th season. I could watch that game on repeat. Well, we're watching it next Tuesday. Yeah. I'm going to break out a good bottle for that one. Dog, I used to watch that game and go to bed every night, bro, for like a full year. Dog. Oh, it was such a good game. Like, I'm going to break – I don't know if I have the defense. I think I have the defense. I know I'm going to break down the offensive film. Bro, on, if you just Tuesday. watch a TV copy, I would just sit there and just – No, I, I got I the was, coach's film. It's I better. Cry, cry. You can watch Evan Spencer not get motion and the ridiculous uh, effort he did to crack uh, the linebacker to, to spring Ezekiel Elliott 85 yards through the heart of the South. Bro, Evan was in his bag because that second or third play when he made that one-handed catch. The first play of the game. Yeah, that shit was fucked up. And they up. called it incomplete, and I'm still pissed about it. They didn't even review it. It's fucking absurd. Yeah. Uh, the playmaker, thank you for the five. Covered three, spent a segment talking about how it's down to Sane and Howard for QB. Had no idea Brown was starting all spring. Is the media that clueless? I mean, certainly the national media. Absolutely. I mean, I cover three. I, I, that's the one with Danny Cannell or whatever. Yeah, that's Danny Cannell and your boy Ch- uh, Chip. Yeah, and then who's the other guy that blocked right. you for calling him out? I don't know. I don't care. Um, yeah, they have no fucking idea what they're talking about. They well, Here's what they did. They listened to the Buckeye beat talk about it, and they've kind of said the same thing, yeah. and they just don't know. They just have no idea, and so they're just running that narrative, and they're trying to talk about a national team that they don't have any idea about. And again, careful what you fill your head with. Careful what you listen to. That's real. That is real. Uh, Terry, thanks for the 10. What's happening, Coach and Chris? As a Buffalo Bills fan, born in Buffalo in 1965, I always felt like we had to remind Josh Allen that he plays for <laughs> Buffalo every time he went onto the field. Well, we, they should do that more often then. Mm-hmm. Maybe after every series. Sean, thanks for the five. Man, hell with Angel and LSU. What kind of leader misses the national anthem? Stop with the BS. She's a dog. That shit is soft and uh and what punish rap, rap, rap a noish rap a noish yeah it depends on what you believe about the national anthem they said that they, they stuck to their schedule they didn't know the anthem was being played whatever yeah I, I, I'm actually not that entrenched in it to be honest yeah I don't know I'm not that entrenched going back to media that just speaks on shit I just I thought that clip was cool because it showed that she elevated the girls that she plays with yeah. that's undeniable after listening to her teammate. Patriot, thanks for the 10. I membered up. Go Bucks. Appreciate you, Patriot. That's real. Oh, this is a great question for you. Texas Mad Dog, thanks for the two. Better pro prospect, Caleb Downs or Malachi Starks? Ooh. So Malachi's a year older. Yep. That's tough. They're both going to be great pros. They are. I, I, I've never seen a freshman like Caleb Downs. Both so I'm going to freshman All Americans. I'm going to lean Caleb Downs, but I mean, you're splitting hairs right now. Both of them are phenomenal. I mean, Malachi Starks was a starting safety on one of the uh, – Yeah, it's that, tough, man. A team I, that ran the table was filled with NFL players everywhere, and he shined in, right. in every big game, every big moment. And, like, Caleb Downs had to work out some of those freshman mistakes early, ended up becoming a really good player. Malachi Starks stepped on campus like a third-year junior. Now, I think Malachi Starks is one of the cases of, like, higher floor, lower ceiling, but he's – he's real. they're both really fucking Yeah, good. they're both really uh, – phenomenal. Mm-hmm. They're, they're ph- phenomenal, phenomenal players, which is great. I mean, I, I wanna... but I'm just saying, if you evaluated their freshman tape, I think Caleb Downs has a very, very small, slight edge. Okay, I would, I would agree with you. I just also think Malachi Starks is really good. Of course, yeah, he's fucking. I mean, that was 
He just picked the two best safeties in the country. <laughs> yeah. And also it speaks to when you have an uber talented guy, play them early in the season. Please, God. Like, goodness gracious. I mean, because you know who was ranked lower than both those guys? Or, you know, you know, Sonny Styles was ranked higher than Malachi Starks, and we didn't see him till the Georgia game. Yeah. Both freshmen. Just point that out. And also, before the re-ranking, uh, Sonny Styles was ranked higher than Caleb Downs before he reclassified. So, um, definitely wild. Um, PFF dropped a list of best returning player at each position. I thought this was interesting. I wanted to give you a, a look at it. You agree here? Disagree? Where are you at with, with this, at least? I mean, so Carson Beck, I think that's that's quarterback wise, probably accurate. I mean, I broke down uh, maybe like five Georgia games this year. He was outstanding. I think and, that's a preference thing, though, right? Yeah, I mean, it's. I think that's going into the year. And how many times is that player actually the best quarterback in the country when the when the foot hits the ball? I think I, I don't. I don't really have a problem with anyone on this list. I mean, you go Carson Brett Beck quarterback. I take him. What Quinn Ewers is the other one that you could you could yeah, make an argument for Quinn. That's about it. I'm still. I'll take Carson Beck. Ollie Gordon, I mean, it's hard not to pick him. I mean, it's, he also gets fed like crazy. I don't think it. I think at the end of the year, he'll probably have better stats than guys like Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins and the two backs at Penn State and Donovan. Because uh, he's Edwards. like he's like your Braylon Allen, right? Yeah, he's, he's the gonna he, he's just the guy that's gonna he's gonna go for two K just because right. th he's at Oklahoma State. They're gonna feed him. Now, is he gonna be a better pro than anyone I just mentioned? Probably not. Um. Luther Burden at receiver, that's an easy choice because he was so good as an underclassman. I don't know that that's going to be true at the end of the year, but that's an easy one to pick. Colston Loveland, if you're if we're not talking about blocking, mm -hmm. I agree. If you're talking about blocking, get him off the list. Like if it's if we're talking about playing tight end, the full the full plethora of job duties they have to do, no, absolutely not. But if it's just as a receiver, like a Kyle Pitts, I can buy that. Yeah, that's fair. Now watch out for Brock Bowers 2.0 down in Georgia. Yeah, I was gonna say my guy Oscar Delp got something different. Yeah, he, I think he'll be better than Colson Loveland this year, Cause but because he, he blocks, because yeah. I, mean, I mean Kirby Smart's program, you have to. Yeah, you absolutely. Have to. And then the rest of this, I mean, Will, I don't know much about Will Campbell, the O lineman at LSU. He, he, he'd been really, he's been really, really yeah. good for for a little bit. James Pierce, um, I'd have to really look at all the DNs that are coming back, but he, I know he was really good. Mason Graham, I agree. I, yeah. I I can't even argue against that. Harold Perkins, absolutely. Um, Will Johnson, absolutely. Caleb Downs, absolutely. Like Malachi Starks, I guess, is the one you could pick over Caleb Downs. Yeah, and, and here we go. I know Michigan lost a lot, but having three players on that list, it means something. I can't I can't tell if they're going to follow up a clip or not, bro. I'm just telling you what I've heard from Ann Arbor from a, the obvious source. That defense is fucking ridiculous still. Like, the more I look into it, the more I'm thinking they might not fall off the cliff. Well, you got to think about how they won last year. Exactly. And like, what does fall off a cliff? Like, I know they have a couple tough games outside of the Ohio State game, but like 10 and one and a loss to the Buckeyes might not even be a fall off the cliff. It might just be an elevation by Ohio State, right? Yeah, I think fall off a cliff is eight and four, nine and three. Yeah, I mean, it, don't get me wrong; it could happen. Losing forty-four yeah. guys, I absolutely could see that happening. I just don't think it will. <laughs> is what two losses? That's not really a cliff, right? I don't think so because look, they have they have Texas week two. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you look at their schedule comparatively to last year, Ohio State is going to be much better than they were last year. That's undeniable. Whether they can beat Michigan or win a title, that's yet to be seen. But they're going to be much better than they were a year ago, and that's not even up for debate. But last year's Michigan team never played a team like – they didn't play Texas, right? Mm -mm. I guess you could say what? Um, Alabama would be comparable, but they didn't have a quarterback like Quinn Ewers. I mean, it's – you're splitting hairs. If they only lose to Texas and Ohio State and they go 10-2 and – Maybe it's a, I mean, just a slight dip from last year. The other part of me though is like, oh, this is this this could be a cliff because they're losing two guys that Michigan fans told us were generational all year. Yeah, Blake Corm and JJ McCarthy. Yeah, and, I, I and Roman they'll, Wilson. They'll be fine in the running back room. They don't need a receiver, no. and and we'll see if Alex Orgy can throw the ball. But the the one that kind of makes it a step down, if they lose to Texas and Ohio State, I think it's just a slight step down. I think that's more that those teams elevated and Michigan lost forty four guys. If they lose to Oregon too, and Dylan Gabriel and Dan Campbell, now you're talking about nine and three. That's a step down. Yeah. Well, and and I, here we go. I think they lose all three. I don't think they. I don't think they score enough points. Yeah. To win those games. 
Be interesting to see, man. I just don't think they score enough points. Texas week two, USC week four, USC week four at home. They'll probably win that. No, that's the thing. Like, like how many points are they, are they going to be able to suffoc- suffocate USC? Here's the thing, though. They have all three of those teams at home. Okay. They have Texas at home, USC at home, Oregon at home, then obviously Ohio State on the road. Hmm. That matters. I don't know. I just their defense is going to be good. I, don't, I just don't know how many points they're going to score. <laughs> yeah, that's well, well, that's that's why they develop and coach, and that's why they have spring ball. Yeah. So we'll see. But I do want to get a quick word from our partner. Zach. Sounds good. We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army. You know I'm a pouch guy. I found the best pouches on the market, and they're they are made by a company called Lucy. They're made for your nicotine routine and delivered straight to your door. 100 pure nicotine, always tobacco free. You can choose your form, pouches, breakers, which have a little juice infusion, or gum. They have all three options. You can choose your strength, 2 milligrams to 12 milligrams. If you don't use if you don't use nicotine very much, 2 milligrams will suit you. If you need a little kick because it's not working for you, all the way up to 12 milligrams, the most I've seen on the market. There's mint, apple ice, espresso, mango, a ton of flavor options, and they're outstanding. I use them every day. Save yourself from the weekly gas station stop and sign up for a monthly subscription and get 15% off. I already mentioned the Lucy Breakers. They have a tiny capsule inside. You just bite it, flavor instantly. They're outstanding. My favorite Lucy flavor is the mango. I think they're out. They're just amazing. All you have to do is level up your nicotine routine with Lucy. Go to lucy.co forward slash menace and use promo code menace to get 20% off your first order. Lucy already offers free shipping, has a 30-day refund policy. If you change your mind, all you got to do is lucy.co and use code menace, get 20% off free shipping. And here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age, and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Go check them out. It'll change your pouch game. Level up with Lucy. Lucy for Lucy for dawn of the morning. Level up. Level up. Um, Michigan recruiting, Zach, I want to ask you if this is any, if Michigan fans or anybody should be concerned, they're outside the top 25 currently for the 2025 recruiting class. Um, look at this. we got a long, long time till signing day. They just got a new coach. Obviously, you know, that's, that's going to create some struggles at first, but we saw what Kalen De- DeBoer did. We'll see what Sharon yeah. Moore's talking about. I mean, he- yeah, I just want to ask, cause I keep getting tagged in it. Is it, is it a concern? What are your thoughts on it? Cause outside the, like outside the top 15, like I got, I got you, but you're, I mean, you're, you keep Sharon Moore. You think that. At least some recruiting momentum, like to be like lower than SMU and Miami at this point, <laughs> and w- even Wake Forest is a little interesting. Now, I think there will be some major shuffling. I just want to ask you, like, lo- should there be level of concern on one to five for, for Michigan, or no concern at all? Well, yeah, you always are concerned okay. when, when you're low, w- when you're not landing recruits. You always panic, and you got to kick that shit up, and you got to make it happen. So mm-hmm. we'll see the response to it. I don't think it, all that matters is where they at on signing day, and so what they do from now to signing this summer is going to be huge getting kids on campus, coming up to camps, coming up to visit. Like, that's going to be massive. Spring, you have spring ball and summer. Those are your two times, especially with the early signing period. Obviously, you have games. But national kids, I'm not bringing to a, a game unless it's in September. Right. So I'll bring them to the Texas game. That's about it. You better win. Shout out to your guy, Fran Brown, being top 15. How cool is that? Not surprised. He's going to be able to recruit for real. And I wonder what they're what, – they, Watch him turn Kyle McCord into a fucking dog. <laughs> like like a tough-ass, square-jawed fucking dude. I – Put him in the Hall of Fame if he does. That would be quite the transformation. <laughs> Again, hey, a quarterback playing for a defensive coach. Love to see it. Dubbing him up. And also, like, Kyle McCord was so, like, hurt for most of last year, too. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if he looks a lot better um, with more years and less pressure and ACC defenses um, with, with a weak schedule. And, I mean, and a godsend schedule. <laughs> yeah. Like, if they finish in the top 25, like, <laughs> holy shit, uh, Fran is absolutely the man. Uh, this is a quick little sub note, Zach. It looks like Ricardo Holman. Um, who was a third-team All-American, the defensive back from um, Wisconsin. The room word on the street, my guy my guy Zeke let me know that Alabama has been tampering crazy, and it uh, looks like he'll be, he'll be one of those superstars that enters in the spring portal. Good for them. <laughs> it's cool how we find about, out about people tampering and all that, but like NCAA, no clue. Well, they got to have proof. We don't have to have proof. Yeah. We can just say that shit. They have to be. They have to have proof, but they have no way to obtain the proof. No. And, and they'll probably lose the court case. <laughs> yeah, they've been on a they've been on a losing streak here uh, here recently. Um, of note, some Ohio State news after all the changes. The line has moved. Um, Buckeye Scoop posted about it. I had to go do some do some researching. They were they opened up at plus seven hundred odds to win the title. They are now at plus four twenty five. 
First of all, does it surprise you that they are not the favorite to win it all next year? I mean, no, because Ryan hasn't won one yet. Okay. Kirby's got a fucking, what, he's got three? Uh, two. I two, back to back, right? Yeah. I, I I think that's more a Kirby Smart and his program versus Ryan Day and his program because it's they're not far off. Georgia's plus three fifty, they're plus four twenty five. Um, but I think it is crazy just kind of the development that's happened when it opened at plus seven hundred to move all the way to plus four twenty five. They're moving, they're trending in the right direction. And ultimately, if you're in the top five preseason odds to win the Natty, it all comes down to coaching and development. You have the team that could do it. You just got to develop them, coach them up, and call the right play. You know, everything's got to fall in line. Like I said, it's really hard to do. It's not an easy thing to do. If you get the most talented team in the country, it's easier than not the most talented team in the country, but it's still hard. It's not just an end-all, be-all, like, we're the most talented team, we're going to win the Natty. Yeah, the top five are Georgia, Ohio State, Texas, Alabama, Oregon. Uh, it's crazy because it's like, all, what? I mean, all those schools, except for Ohio State and Bama, feel probably pretty good about their quarterback situation. Yeah. The other ones, I mean, Georgia's got their quarterback, well, top five in the country. <laughs> Texas, quarterback, top five in the country. Oregon, quarterback, top five in the country. Alabama, Ohio State are going to probably be three and seven. Blue chip ratio once that final number comes out. But the big question mark is at the quarterback spot. It's just wild to me that Oregon has worse odds than Bama. Me too. Like losing who they lost, the question marks around Jalen Milrow or the quarterback position – how can you not believe, I guess, maybe just because of the name, because of the logo? Make Kalen DeBoer was in the playoffs last year. I don't I, I guess that's the reason. Yeah. I mean, I mean, DeBoer is two and oh against Lanning. Yeah. Like he he went he went up top on him last year. And if you look at the Oregon schedule, could that be a hindrance? I mean, they oh, never mind. They only have Ohio State, Michigan, Washington. They can lose two of those and make the playoffs. Probably. So I mean, I honestly, out of these <laughs> Teams, Oregon at plus a thousand, that feels like some really good juice because they're gonna have a, a top three um talent composite. And and also like Dylan Gabriel of all the transfer quarterbacks has talked about the very least. He was real good last year. Yeah, he was he was the best on the field last year. He was the best quarterback that transferred. Yeah. And it was because there was no trauma, right? He entered the portal, went to Oregon. All right, that's done. Moving on. You had the Cam Ward going to the NFL, not going to the NFL, gonna go here, gonna go there. Will Howard comes in. I mean, it's just I guess he was the least dramatic about his transfer. But, like, I feel good about him, too, because of, like, the big game clutch moments. Like, yeah. when Kyle McCord, when the game was on the line and we had what, a minute or two left and Kyle McCord was out there, it was terrifying. Terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying. Same with Jalen Moro out there for Bama. I'm sure same deal. It's like, you didn't know what you were going to get. Yeah. Dylan Gabriel, with a minute left, Red River rivalry. Fucking slayed the beast. The hottest possible knife through butter. Yeah. Like this boy took the lightsaber through butter. He really did. And cut them up, stood in the pocket, took shots from the defensive tackles, was going crazy and won the game like it was light work. It, it, and that matters. Like that's big. That's massive. You talk about the big game moments. You talked yesterday about Joe Burrow. Like, how dare you blitz me? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's Joe Burrow, but in that moment, he had a Heisman moment, went crazy and made you feel really good. And you know, like, like for me at least. I'll be terrified the first time Devin Brown or Will Howard. It's like two minutes left. We got to we got to go drive down a winning game. Well, it's their moment, right? That right. is their moment to either have a Dylan Gabriel moment or have a Kyle McCord against Michigan moment. Mm -hmm. And almost Kyle McCord against Notre Dame. Now, I know they won the game, but you and I Boy, have talked he about should have thrown a pick. <laughs> at least one. At least, at least, at least, at least. Um, Ryan Day had some things to say about the new organ hire. And this, you know, I just wanted your thoughts on it because he's either sneak this in you, <laughs> Corey Dennis, or Jim Harbaugh. Don't don't know yet. But he said on, on, on Coach Locke, like some of us in this profession, he came up not in a football family, but grew up and kind of had to figure it out on his own. Inbounds, out of bounds, sneak this in, or just being honest. I, I think he just relates to, to, to Lachlan because they both came up and not a football family. Probably a slight shot at Jim Harbaugh. Kind of Bush League because Harbaugh left. He didn't say that shit when he was here. Mm -hmm. But whatever. It's drama. Off-season drama. Harbaugh's so far in bro's head. He really is. Well, like, he beat his ass three years in a row. I know, but like... Like, 
Ryan can't stop taking subliminals at Jim Harbaugh. No. Like, he just can't stop. No. Every chance he can't stop. And, you know, he even called his brother in to go take down the Michigan program and then lost anyway. Um, honestly, I don't think it was a shot. I think it was more about relatability to himself. But I, I also can see how it's taken as a shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I definitely can see it both ways. And you don't get to respond. Like there's like there's no like you'll you're not gonna face Jim Harbaugh again. No, like it's over. Uh, <laughs> I also I also think it's a little bit corny from Ryan because you've talked about it several times. Like just because like, uh, nepotism hires whatever are one thing, but they don't keep you in the industry. Like that's not the reason why he beat Ryan Day. Mm -mm. Um, and that's why I don't know. Mm -hmm. Fucking hell. Um, want to talk to you about CJ Hicks. CJ Hicks has been repping ahead of Sonny Styles at linebacker here. Um, some of the scrimmages, a lot of talk about he's doing a really, really good job. Zach, I know you called for it. You called for it. You thought he should have been out there playing football. I thought so as well. Is he taking a massive leap or was he held back last year? I, 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 <laughs> it's either or or a combination of the two, but he better not be repping over Sonny Styles. Like, I mean, I like Cody Simon, but like, let's let's play CJ Hicks and Sonny Styles and look like Georgia. How about that? It's like we're so close, Zach. We're so, so close. close to looking like absolute freaks all the way across I'm just the saying, board. If our DNs get unleashed in pass rush, and your starting linebackers are a maximize CJ Hicks and Sonny Styles with the secondary. Oh my God! Might be it's the best defense in the country. After practice today, Tim Walton was spending some extra time with CJ Hicks. Dog, the more I think about this, I'm going to be hurt no matter what. You Wait, know why? Hold on. Why is Tim Walton spending time with him? Because no one else can develop him. I guess. I guess so. Because we didn't we just hire a linebacker coach? Uh, yeah, but the guy after practice with him was whatever. Tim Walton. It, sure it could be. It could be anything. Yeah. They could have been working on punt block technique or something mm -hmm. that Tim Walton's a part of. It's going to piss me off because CJ Hicks is going to is going to play this year. Mm -hmm. And if he has a big year, he's going to be one and done. And it's going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, y'all telling me, no disrespect, we had to watch Steele and Tommy play since Jim Trestle was here. <laughs> and we got CJ Hicks for one year. That's my biggest frustration. That's my biggest frustration. We'll let it play out. You don't know he's going to leave early. And I'm, he might be here for two. But how how bad would it be if he doesn't start? That if he doesn't start this year? Yeah. Oh, God. But who's he going to start over? Got to be Cody. It, it can't be Sonny, right? No, it can't be Sonny. So I'm saying. It can't be Sonny. But he's, I mean, everyone, even at the scrimmage on Saturday, said he was with the ones a lot. Like He's out there I doing it. And, and it, to them, it looked like he knew the defense. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to the people that don't know the defense, it looked like he knew the defense. Yeah, you know, when someone's <laughs> out there calling stuff out, you think, okay, like maybe he doesn't. You defense. don't know what he's supposed to do. <laughs> but no matter what he is, you got to get him on the field, right? Like at, at the very least. He's got to be, he's got all the tools and traits to be a pass rusher, right? I would think so. You got to have some kind of sub package to get him on the field. He cannot be off the field. As talented as he is, all the reports and listening to the press conferences. Oh, I'm excited to unleash CJ Hicks. Like, he's got to play in some role, some fashion. He has to play. It's just fucked up, bro, that we can't get the nice things, bro. Because that linebacker class, Zach, was Abdul Carter, uh, fuck, Hen Harold Perkins, and CJ Hicks. The other two we got to see right away. And they're the two best linebackers in the country. That's what I'm saying. Why do we have to wait three years? I don't know. Three years. And you're going to have to play no matter what just because it is such a long season and yeah. you got to be deep. And, you know, honestly, injuries have been – the in, injuries and guys not repping have been the reason a lot for a lot of the, the mishaps. Yeah. Um, I remember what did, what did Jim Knowles say before last season? I have to do a better job projecting to the end of the season. Yeah. And then he didn't. Yep. I'm hoping he learns uh, learns this year. So, Zach, we're going to hear some practice reports at some point coming out. If it's still the case where Will Howard isn't better than Devin Brown, at what point do you have the discussion about, oh, goodness, it's not going to be Will Howard this year? Well, I mean, I'm already having the discussion. So okay. it, de it depends on who you are. Um at some point, like I said, at some point, even if it was even, even if he wasn't the better quarterback, you would run him out there with the ones. Like, he would start yeah. a, a spring practice because who gives a fuck? Just throw him the ball and see, see what he does with it, right? And he's, don't get me wrong, he's repped, he's been with the ones, but he, 
He's never felt like, all right, I'm the guy today. He's always felt like he's chasing the guy that was here already, Devin Brown. Mm -hmm. At some point, let him go try it. And I think that's, no matter what, If that even if Devin's better than Will through eight practices, at some point, I'm still going to mix it up because it's spring. Why not? I'm still going to give him first team reps. I'm going to still trot him out there the very first rep to see what the, the team does, the response, what he does, and what Devin Brown does with that swap. I, I, I think it needs to happen, and now's about the time. I'm not saying that Ryan should have done it already, but I think now's about the time to do it, and here's what's going to happen. Overreaction like crazy. Oh, he took the job from Devin Brown. He's officially the guy. <laughs> You're like, no. Maybe. I mean, maybe, but not through the first eight practices, so he must – do some miraculous things on Sundays. It's, I, I, I think it's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, that's to me, that's the nail in the coffin that Devin Brown's the starter. If it does happen, I think Ryan's trying to get that shit going a little bit. Paint the walls. Yeah. Paint the walls, change it up. See how they respond. It's a motivation tactic at this point. Got brought up by my, by my guy, Seawall, Zach. Could you see Ryan day and chip Kelly running a two quarterback offense? Fuck the way no. chip ran at, at UCLA. Fuck no, please. God, no. <laughs> Please, God, no. Bro, it's just, it just feels eerily similar to last year. It's different when you're Oregon and you're not one of the best teams in the country and you're trying to win games. This is Ohio State. No no two-quarterback system, please. Just saying, bro. It's, we, we saw, bro, have the white guy be the, be the Tim Tebow and Will Howard's big, you know, the red. We know that there's a red zone package somewhere in the Ohio State playbook, and we know that maybe you don't want to be the have Devin Brown be the battering ram. But to this point, people won't really dispute Devin Brown's the better thrower of the football. Will Howard is bigger and the better runner of the football. I I hate to even put it out there, Zach, but the more if they are obsessed with keeping both, oh, you got to play them. I I think we could get to the fall. Yeah, I could see a red zone package, but it depends on how you're I, like subbing them in on the minus on your own forty. To run some wildcat and uh, like, I hate it. I hate it. Now you talk about a red zone package. I get it. It's really hard to score. It's really hard with numbers being in the defense's favor. That's why I was all for the Devin Brown package. I would be for a red zone package if you didn't want Devin Brown to run the ball because he's your starter. Yeah, or vice versa. I mean, but you're well, they did try it with Kyle. I remember, he ran into the back of his yes, center. I do remember. But that was that was like fucking Mike Yersich running Drew Aller. I'm saying, bro, the C's parted up, bro. All he had to do was run forward and uh, and fucked it up. I don't know. I guess, like, for me, I'm still having PTSD from last year's quarterback stuff. Because, honestly, in, the, in last year in the spring, we heard that it was Kyle McCord. And then in the fall, it was like Kyle McCord is not separated from anybody. Yeah. Um. And so and so here we are. And I think if it's close, I don't know if Ryan Day has the stones to just name one guy the starter or just have it be like that. Because, I mean, last year, he didn't have the stones to actually come out and say Kyle would be the starter. He, he was like, well, we're going to roll Kyle first, and then we're going to give Devin the second half equal snaps. And then what did we see? Devin for three plays against Indiana, and we yeah. saw Kyle stink it up the whole way. Yeah. So. We'll see. We'll see how he manages it. I don't think you're going to get a starting quarterback until the training camp, though. How many weeks into training camp before we start to be like, ah, shit? All dependent on the gap. Okay. Like, does someone seize the job, and then are they that much better? I would, I would say two weeks. You know, fifteen practices in, you, it's about time because you got to. We can't do what we did last year. Mm -hmm. Name a starter and get them ready to go attack this schedule and hopefully win a championship. I like the quarterback guys that end the competitions too early. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. I like Steve Sarkeesian what he did. I'm just going to end it because I want the rest of this spring <coughs> and all of fall for my quarterback to play free and get as many reps of the ones as possible mm -hmm. rather than divvying everything up. Because I think once you end the competition, you can truly focus on the real development of the player rather than trying to develop the starter and potentially the backup. And, and it just feels like a lot of wasted. The time other side of this is, Chris, if Julian Sayan is playing as well as he has, it's okay if you lose one of Devin and Will. Mm -hmm. Let Julian be the backup. It's not like when we had Justin Fields and there was literally nobody, nobody else. Like you can't lose it. I mean, yeah, you, you got to have somebody that's a somewhat competent backup. They have one. He's young, but he's really fucking good for a young player. Yeah. Like I have no problem losing one of the two. So I'm with you. There, there could be a time in spring. I don't know. Again, I don't think he's going to do this. I think he rides no. it to fall camp to try to keep everybody. But I have no problem if he names a starter either or. And just says, all right, if you want to transfer, that's fine. Julian Sand will be the backup. I, and I think this is the room you 
like this is the room you can afford to do it, Zach. Yeah. Because even if if you name Willard Devin the starter and you lose two, guess who you probably keep? Air Nolan and Lincoln or Air Nolan and Julian, and you're three deep with scholarship quarterbacks. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't know. This is the year to do it. He won't do it. He should do it. I really do I, think. I do he, think this, Chris. I think if he does it, no matter which way he goes, you're going to get a better starting quarterback than you would if it drags on. Because you're going to have a guy that goes all summer and into training camp and is the guy. And it's taking all the one reps. And it's that much longer of a preparation for the schedule. I don't think he's going to do it, but I, I definitely see the benefits to it. And you avoid the drama, and the more drama there is around Ohio State, the bigger Ryan Day's bags get below his eyes, dog. They yeah. get to fill him the fuck up. My oh, boy looked drooping like down to his mouth. My boy looked like Goofy. He was <laughs> tired. Listen, just bring me that pappy. Yeah, I need that pappy. Let me sip on that pappy. Sit Name down. a starter. Let's go. Name a starter. Let's ride. And then also, it would end the Civil War with an Ohio State fan base. It would. And that needs the fucking end. But do you want to get a quick word, Zach, then finish off Super Chats? Last word, and then we'll get to your Super Chats. Send them in before we end so we can get to what you want to talk about. We'll be right back after this. All right. You know we love a little fantasy sports, and our partner, Prize Picks, is the best place to do it. Did you know you can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks? Four correct picks. You could turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Obviously, March is gone. April's here. We got Final Four, NBA, all the different options to pick from. And Prize Picks is the one that you need to go with. All you have to do is download the app today and use code MENACE for a first deposit match. That's free money up to $100. Go to prizepicks.com and use Pro promo code menace and if you put in 100 bucks they'll give you 100 free dollars stack four picks or four uh player over or player to uh, totals more or less stack them together and you could win up to 100 times your money turn 100 dollars into into a thousand dollars into it, it's it's truly remarkable which you 100 dollars into ten thousand if you hit it right go check them out price picks our longtime partner and get that free cashish with promo code menace here you go free money Free money. Um, when it's Super Chat Zach, then get us on out of here. Sounds Keel, good. thanks for the two. Hit a five-leg Japanese parlay hey, this morning. Y'all need help. I need to see your – hey, I need both you and DJ to send me whatever it is. You're my bookie uh, account history. I need to see how, how down you are because we might need to call Gamblers Anonymous. <laughs> is that what it's called? I don't know. I, I think maybe. GA. <laughs> George, thanks for the five. That Rose Bowl game against Utah – I remember thinking JSN was the greatest wide receiver I ever seen. That would be a fun one, too. Yeah. I was tripping watching that game, dog. Yeah. I was tripping watching that game. That, that game was crazy. That shit was nuts from CJ, bro, too. And then Marv, three catches, three touchdowns. Nuts. <laughs> Fucking wild. <laughs> Mastermind, thanks for the five. Bron said Spo went to Chip Kelly to learn his offense and see if it could be translated into basketball that second year in Miami. I saw that clip, bro. Bromby Lion Dog. Right. The same guy that said his, whatever that book was was his favorite book. <laughs> Never even fucking opened it. Like, come on, man. Bro, and I maybe he is telling the truth, and I think Spo will back him up, but I, I feel like I've seen LeBron enough times and, and heard him speak enough times for, like, over a decade now to know it's Blue Bro's Lion, bro. Right. <laughs> Stop the cap. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it's true, though. But just the way he said it was too much, like, when he said – Man, I remember turning on that Lakers game thinking, Kobe about to go for 70. Why not 80? <laughs> the, day, the day he hit the, eight, the 81 points, and I'm like, man. No, the fuck you didn't. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. But nah, people, black men from Akron actually aren't capable of lying. <laughs> okay. Gorky, remember, Gorky, thanks for the two. Was it me, or was there no class last night? There was not. We postponed it. Because, long, long story, but I was supposed to, Cam was supposed to have training, and then we were going to do bourbon and ball, the hurricane, or not a hurricane, I keep calling it a hurricane, tornado warnings, all kinds of shit. I was like, let's just do it Wednesday so I don't have to deal with any of this shit. Yeah. So it's tonight, 8 o'clock, Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. Be there, be square. James, thanks for the 10. Happy for CJ and the Texans, but Diggs is a locker room nightmare. Team chemistry is what drove success for Houston. Hopefully it works out for them. Hey, we'll find out. It's done now, but I don't disagree. Yeah, I mean... 
honestly, I'm, I'm curious how much financially they've got invested into him because our guy Patch let us know that that the uh, the Bills are taking a thirty million dollar dead cap hit right. for that. So if he's too much of a problem, get him out of there. Get him out of there. Send um Keel, thanks for the two. Jason ducking my bets, even with financing options. <laughs> I love the chat bets. Okay, that's fair. Um, Andrew, thanks for the two. To be fair, Jim keeps taking shots at day. That's true, too. I haven't heard the last shot that Jim shot his way. I don't pay attention to him now that he's in the NFL. I really don't think Jim is witty enough to take shots. I think like that third base thing was something he'd been sitting on for a while. Yeah. Um, and honestly, he might have even said that if he he beat Urban one time, right? <laughs> to, to keep it a beam, but you know, you know how it goes. Jason, thank you for the twenty. Love the new merch buying this week for me and the wife, and love going to Yogi's and take the time to talk to the Menace Army. The wife loves the sheets. Love you guys. I, I'm trying to tell you, it's not it's not just because they're advertising with us. Like I have the Miracle Made sheets, and they are fucking awesome. Yeah. They're worth every penny, and you get like a sh I mean, forty percent off, then twenty more. Like I'm just saying. Do what you want with that info. Invest in yourself. Invest Please. in your sleep. Um, come to the live show, Zach, and then that's all. I, that's all I got. Come to the live show, buy merch, do your thing. Menace to merch .com. Got a bunch of stuff on there, and guess what? This week we're rolling out some more merch, some team color merch. There's a few people asked about team colors, but I did. If you watch the ad reads, that pullover that I was wearing, the hat I was wearing, got added this week. We're gonna keep building, keep growing. And I, I got a new purchase I'm going to make that's going to even level it up even more. So go check it out, menacetomerch.com. And then also, April 12th, next Friday, at Yogi's. Doors open at 11. Yogi's on Hard Road. 11 o'clock. It's going to be packed. So get there when it opens. Get a seat. Order your drink. And let's fucking be degenerates the day before the spring game. Come a day early. Come hang out with us. We appreciate you, Menace Army.